Good morning, everyone. We begin a new week. It is Monday, July 13th. And the reading I'd like to start with from my reflection is the reading from Isaiah, just the last line or two. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes, cease doing evil, learn to do good, make justice your aim, redress the wronged, hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. I most especially like cease doing evil, learn to do good. And I'm reminded that that's what parents try to do with their children from very early on. They teach them to do good. And we are always on top of our children, aren't we? We're always saying to them, make sure that you say thank you. Make sure that you wash your hands before dinner. Make sure that you finish your food. Make sure you do your chores. We develop a whole laundry list as, as parents and guardians over what we want children to do so that they will grow up to be good. And we tend to be very affirmative about that, don't we? we? We don't let things slip by. Did you do your chores? Did you do this? Did you do that? We are very, very attentive to making sure that we pour into our children all the best things we know that they ought to be doing because we want them to live good and, and righteous lives, as it says at the end of the uh, Isaiah reading, to see the downtrodden and the poor and the, the disadvantaged of the world and to build a better world. The difficulty is that once we grow up and become adults, we can do what we want to do. There's no one else around telling us to do good anymore except our conscience, except our thoughts, our prayers, and, and, and just what we've learned. Uh, our memories, but all too often we forget those. I've always said one of the great disappointments of my life is that grown-ups don't always act like grown-ups because when I was a child and my parents were teaching me how to do good, they were good role models for me. And I kind of assumed that that happened when you got to be like 21 or 25, a certain age, that all of a sudden everything you learned before became really baked in, so to speak and you continue to do that throughout your adult life. But then I found out that uh, it doesn't work that way, that often adults begin to wander in their adult life. The pressures of work, pressures of a marriage perhaps, pressures of all sorts begin to creep in and there's no one around to tell us, hey, your life has taken a wrong turn. You're not doing good anymore. You're angry, you're impatient, you're short with your friends and your temper. All sorts of things begin to creep in, and they unravel all the good stuff that mom and dad poured in. Sometimes, most time, the unraveling is temporary. Sometimes it lasts a lot longer, sometimes for a lifetime. And we know people like that. They become bitter, they become angry, they become impatient, and it's not temporary, and that's not a good life. So think about that, my friends, in the coming week. Learn to do good. We all did once upon a time. We still need to. We still need to act upon the world the way mom and dad told us to act. We need to remember that what we learned so long ago is not just meant to rear children in the right way, but to guide us in our adult lives to living Christian lives in the sight of God as Jesus wishes us to. Matthew's Gospel for today. Jesus said to his apostles, do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is righteous, will receive a righteous man's reward. 
And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, this, because he is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a severe gospel in the beginning, is it, my friends? It reminds us that life is full of choices. Jesus lets them know that sometimes those are tough choices, but they have to be made. He lets them know that if you want to be a prophet in the world, if you want to proclaim in the world, then you have to wear the mantle of discipleship. He who receives you receives me. Meaning, of course, that we are out in the world to bring Christ to others. It's a simple case of discipleship. We had this gospel on a Sunday not very, very long ago, and I said the same thing. The, the whole notion that, that we, we approach God through our relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He who came into the world as God's chosen, God's only Son, so that we might have access to God the Father. Now, how important is that? And he who gives only a cup of cold water to one, <coughs> excuse me, to one of these little ones will receive a reward. It's interesting that the gospel ends with that simple act of charity. Jesus always reminding us to put action behind your words, to put action into what it is that you do. So it's not just words, it is touching the lives of other people. Touch a life today, my friends. Touch a life each and every day. You will receive a prophet's reward. Make those tough choices. Make them in and through Jesus Christ. And truly, you will receive the reward of a closer relationship with Almighty God. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. Join me, my friends, now in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And Almighty God, bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My friends, before I commend you to share a sign of peace, I want to share with you that we are going to add the uh, Blessed Sacrament to our daily programming. Uh, we will provide one hour of um, attention to our tabernacle here in our church. Uh, we have an extraordinary building, our tabernacle, uh, fashioned uh, very much in the way of the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, the folks who built this church and the pastor had an eye for the dramatic and for beautiful design. And behind our tabernacle, as you can see, an incredible 
Italian mosaic of the cup and the Eucharist flanked um, with uh, mosaic decoration and of course the uh, sanctuary light. So uh, we're going to leave you uh, with one hour of uh, the camera uh, and the Blessed Sacrament so that you can reflect uh, and pray. Uh, we will have some prayers dedicated to the Eucharist on the screen uh, as well uh, and uh, perhaps um, some appropriate uh, music in the background. We hope you uh, enjoy this as we build our broadcast day, which is the term they use these days in media. We will be adding other features as time goes on. Uh, this programming began with the COVID virus um, making our decision to really get into media in this parish. We had the equipment, but we were doing it slowly. We have certainly sped it up. I want to thank uh, my good friend Brian, our video director behind the camera, and uh, Sean and a few others who have helped us do this. We're going to bring much more programming to you as time goes on, uh, and we're working very hard at it. Uh, be that as it may, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always and wherever you are and whomever you're with. Share God's love and peace at this time, and I will see you soon. And again, uh, enjoy some time in front of the Eucharist. If you're at home, uh, by yourself, wherever you are, uh, perhaps some prayers uh, and time spent with the Lord will make your day more calm, more peace-filled, and certainly draw you near to Jesus Christ.